cloud engineer or AI and machine learning engineer? The question is, which one should you choose? And is there actually a smarter approach that nobody is talking about? I'm Suleiman, I've worked in tech for a decade and I run my own AI cloud security consultancy. And through my academy, I've helped more than 400 students learn cloud and AI with my first principles blueprint for engineers. In this video, I'll reveal what cloud and AI machine learning engineers actually do, the skills that you need for both paths and the salaries that you can expect and also a hidden and smarter opportunity that most people are missing. And by the end, you will have a clear picture of what to choose and a strategy that you can implement starting today. So everyone's talking about AI, ChatGPT, Cursor AI, DeepSeek, Tesla bot. It seems like AI is everywhere. And to be honest, it's not going anywhere. AI machine learning engineers are in extremely high demand but what do they actually do? They are building AI powered recommendation systems that you see when you're browsing Netflix or shopping on Amazon. These are all driven by algorithms and machine learning is exactly what it says on the tin. You're teaching computers to learn recognize patterns and make predictions based on data. And data is very much the new oil. Now, in a typical day in the life of an AI machine learning engineer, they might spend their time pre-processing massive data sets to make them usable, experimenting with different algorithms, training actual AI models and evaluating their performance. And what this really means in practice is that AI and machine learning engineers bridge the gap between theoretical data science and practical applications. They are the ones who take mathematical concepts and turn them into functional systems that actually solve real business problems. Now, unlike pure AI researchers who might focus on advancing the field through academic papers, AI and machine learning engineers are focused on implementation and sometimes deployment. For example, creating models that work reliably in production environments. Now, in terms of their technical requirements, these are quite substantial. You'll need strong programming skills in Python. This is virtually the backbone of machine learning. As well, you are required to have a deep understanding of machine learning algorithms and proficiency with frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch. Then there is the mathematical foundation, linear algebra, statistics, and calculus. These underpin everything in AI. Career-wise, you can start as a machine learning engineer, very comfortably making six figures before advancing to senior machine learning engineer engineer or potential machine learning architects earning way over $200,000 per year. You might also venture into computer vision engineer or natural language processing engineer or exciting careers with a lot of money to be made. Sounds incredible, right? But there is a reason these positions pay so well. The barrier to entry is exceptionally high and the competition is intense. Most of these roles require multiple years of experience, creating a catch-22. You need experience to get a job, but also you need to get hired in order to get the experience. And there's another problem. Most AI projects never actually make it to production. Only about 13% of AI projects ever make it. But why does that happen? To me, there's actually a massive gap between training and developing a model and actually deploying it at scale. You see, AI systems need very specialized infrastructure, and that's precisely where cloud engineers enter the picture. Cloud engineers design and maintain the infrastructure that powers our online world. They're the ones ensuring that when millions of people open Instagram at the very same time, the app doesn't crash. They make sure your banking transactions are secure and your Netflix streams without buffering. But in 2025 and going forward, the role of a cloud engineer is evolving. Today's cloud engineers are building the infrastructure specifically designed to support AI workloads, simply because the demand and investment into this area is so significant. OpenAI just raised $40 billion for ChatGPT and their whole infrastructure that powers the app is built on the cloud. And this has very different requirements to traditional applications. Now, on a typical day, a cloud engineer might design scalable architecture that can handle fluctuating demands, implementing security controls to protect sensitive customer data, optimize cloud resources to reduce costs, and configuring specialized environments for AI workloads, or of course, traditional applications. And what skills do you require? Well, you need a deep knowledge of at least one major cloud platform. I would recommend AWS since it's the industry leader and therefore has the most job opportunities worldwide. From there, you want to master the core four, computing, storage, networking, and security. You also need to be competent with infrastructure's code tools using Terraform and develop strong scripting abilities with Python and Bash, which is also mandatory. And equally important is knowing how to set up CICD pipelines using platforms like Jenkins and GitHub Actions. And this is where the DevOps picture comes into place. Now, with that said, here is what makes cloud engineering 
such an attractive career path. The barrier to entry is significantly lower than AI machine learning engineering. You can land an entry level position within three months of starting paying around $90,000 on the low end and quickly progressing to senior positions in just a few years, like a solutions architect or a cloud security engineer, earning way over $150,000. But there's even something more interesting happening in the space. In 2025, we are witnessing a fundamental shift in AI and cloud engineering. With the massive investments in AI technologies, which all live in the cloud, this has created a vacuum. And what does this mean for you? right? It means that there's a massive opportunity at the intersection of cloud and AI that basically everyone is missing. Whilst thousands of candidates fight for pure AI and machine learning roles, a new role is emerging, the AI cloud engineer. These professionals understand both worlds, the infrastructure requirements and the AI implementation at scale. But how do you know what the best career path is for you? Well, Something that I've learned over the years is your career in tech is all about positioning. Now, let me explain. When we look from first principles, your career positioning should be determined by three fundamental factors. Firstly, you want to understand the market forces, which skills and capabilities are genuinely increasing in value and not just from what's getting people hyped right now. Secondly, you want to identify your personal strengths. Where do your unique abilities create disproportionate results? This is where you have natural leverage. And finally, number three, and this is what most people miss, identify opportunity leverage points. Which positions create maximum impact with minimum effort in your specific situation? The intersection of these three elements reveals your optimal career position. Too many engineers focus only on market trends, chasing whatever technology is trending without considering their unique leverage or their own strength multipliers. And because I'm always acquiring new skills and new perspectives, every quarter I do something called position position analysis. This is where I explicitly reevaluate these three factors and it just takes 90 minutes, but it's completely transformed how intentionally I navigate my career and the direction that I take all of my businesses. Because with every passing day, my skills increase and the market forces may change. And this way, I'm always one step ahead. So when you found the right career positioning, what is next? How do you create maximum value? How do you excel in the path that you've chosen? There's another principle that I discovered that helped me accelerate my success in tech. You see, over a short amount of time, I've grown from working as a normal engineer to going into independent consulting for startup and businesses, making three to four times more than my normal salary, to then launching and running my own consultancy, where we get paid for the value that we deliver for our customers. This is only possible by the frameworks that I've developed and learned over time that I'm sharing with you in this video. So if you want to take things to the next level, pay close attention because if you can't focus, you're not going to make it. Now, when we look at organizational value from first principles, we discover something counterintuitive. The earlier in the decision process that you position yourself, the more impact you create with the same skill set. Think about it. As engineers and even myself running my businesses, we're literally trained to be executors. Our entire learning and education focuses on building, implementing, and problem solving. We are rewarded for shipping code, fixing bugs, and delivering features. This creates a deeply ingrained belief that technical excellence in execution is the primary path to career advancement. But here is the reality that I've witnessed over and over. The engineer who decide what gets built often creates 10 times more value than simply the engineer who builds it perfectly. This is why pillar two in my first principles blueprint for engineers is engineering leadership, which matters so much. And to develop engineering leadership, you need four critical capabilities. Number one, problem framing ability, seeing the real issue beneath the symptom. Number two, business context awareness, understanding the why behind requests. Number three, solution option generation. Understanding every decision has trade-offs, so you have to present alternatives and not just one answer. And number four, stakeholder alignment skills, navigating competing priorities. Now the best engineering leaders excel at positioning themselves earlier in a decision chain. They don't just manage teams executing predefined work, they shape the strategic direction of technical investments. They ask the hard questions about business value before committing resources. They identify which problems are worth solving and which aren't. When you deliberately cultivate these capabilities, something remarkable happens. You find yourself naturally pulled into higher leverage positions and yes, 
earning more money without necessarily changing your job title. This is particularly valuable at the intersection of cloud and AI, where the problem space is still being defined. It's a new industry and they aren't a set way of doing things or processes to follow. And the engineers who can help shape how these technologies are applied will create far more value than those who simply implement predefined solutions. So which path should you choose? Cloud engineer or AI machine learning engineer? The answer depends on where you are starting from and your specific strengths. If you're new to tech, you wanna start with the cloud and gradually incorporate AI and ML. If you already have existing AI and ML skills, learn how to deploy and scale your models in the cloud because the real opportunity is at the intersection, becoming an AI cloud engineer who can bridge both worlds. So if you wanna learn more about how to become an AI cloud engineer, then click right here to learn exactly how to do it.